Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Mathematical Toolbox. Today, I've got a very, very exciting book for you all. Before we get into it, as always, if you are new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video if you think it'll help somebody. Let's get into it. So today, we've got the LeBeg Integral for Undergraduates by William Johnston. So this is a very, very unique book. I have never seen another book that does anything like this. Like I said, extremely unique. This is probably one of the only books that will be at all readable to you if you are not a mathematician or do not plan on being a mathematician. This is going to be one of the few books that, on this subject anyways, that will be not alien to you. So here's the preface if you're interested in reading it. So let's get into this book very quickly here. Chapter one really just gets you up to speed gives you the background that you need to understand the Lebesgue integral 1.1 here on countable and uncountable sets. As we can see here, the author does a very, very good job at giving you concrete examples throughout the book. He does this. Again, you're not going to see this anywhere else. This is not something that is normal. This is very abnormal. Questions, the questions are dispersed throughout the chapter. And we have a very, very long list of exercises at the end of each chapter as well. If the author wanted to be lazy, he could have just left these questions within the chapter and not really included uh, any supplemental exercises. Uh, again, if you wanted to be lazy, but he's not, and I applaud him for that. So the proofs here, very, very simple to read. Uh, I don't think I mentioned the prerequisites. I would say the prerequisites, if you have calculus two, which is the official prerequisite, that's sufficient. If you've taken a course on introduction to proofs, you'll be slightly better uh, suited to read this book or maybe a course on discrete math. Either way, I recommend that you have one nearby for reference. So again, the author essentially just holds your hand through this entire book and just uh, very gently introduces you to the notions from uh, measure theory as here in uh, the next section that we'll get into. So again, here are just tons and tons of ex exercises and he has partial solutions in the back. Uh, these here at the end are marked as advanced. I don't think you need to do all of these exercises if you don't want to, but I really recommend though strongly is that you at the bare minimum uh, do these reading questions and just find a set of exercises like these right here in particular that are a little bit more uh, abstract uh, in terms of uh, the work that is asked of you, that it's not asking you to calculate something, it's asking you to show a certain result. I recommend that you do these two sets of problems for every section at the bare minimum. Now, you don't want to, you don't have to, right? But uh, you can get away with just the, the questions within the chapter. Uh, but here we go, 1.2, a taste of measure theory. So again, this is really gonna set the tone for the rest of the book here uh, in terms of the author's writing styles here, definitions, and then, what I love about this book, again, the writing style is superb. This book is near perfect. It's a very, very easy uh, 9 out of 10 at the bare minimum. Uh, the only reason I wouldn't give it a 10, honestly, just because there are some typos. But without the typos, easy 10 for me. Uh, this book does something so, so unique. I've never seen any other book do this. So, again, definitions. He doesn't just give you the definition, move on. What he'll do is before or after giving you the definition, he'll give you some intuition about it. And then like, as we see here, and then gives you the definition and then he'll give you some examples or again, he'll continue to explain it. And then he'll lead you into the questions and try, try hard not to look at the solutions for these questions uh, before giving it an honest shot. Really do it after you've solved each one of them and then go to the, uh, the solutions. The solutions are at the, for these questions that dispersed within the chapter, they're at the end of each section. So again, discussion here, definition, another discussion, and this is meaningful discussion. This isn't junk, this is meaningful discussion. He knows the target audience very, very well here. The author does, again, a very superb job. This is almost perfect. So again, examples. Concrete example here, giving you some help, giving you some intuition here, and then it gives you a problem, and then your theorem proofs as well. So this book is rigorous, but it just does so, and well, it introduces these 
notions from measure theory to you in a very user-friendly way. Like this is something, a, again, all you need is calculus too. So if maybe you're a first, second year engineering, physics, math student, you can get a lot out of this book, a lot. Let's move on here. Chapter or section 1.3, the big integral for, or the the big integral for step functions. Again, here he's just holding your hand, taking you very, very slowly, step by step, each part or each step of the way to until you actually get uh, to calculate a Lebesgue integral here. Now, some of these problems, some of these exercises, some of the, just the notions, right? Some of these proofs, some of these uh, theorems are going to be a little bit difficult for you, but that's normal. That's super normal. Like don't, don't get intimidated. Don't think that you can't do it. You can do it. Like I promise you, you can do it. This book is super awesome. It's a, an amazing book. Now, here we go. Solutions. Let's move on here. Limits. So a lot of the notions from a real analysis are covered here. I wouldn't say that it can substitute fully a course on real analysis. Now, a lot of it is here, right? Integration, obviously limits, continuity, sequences, supremum, infimum, more than that as well. But there are some notions that are not in here that are in a, a book or a course on a real analysis. It really just depends on what book you're using, right? If you're using a book like Rudin, then absolutely not. This book uh, and, and Rudin's book are completely different. They have different goals. This cannot substitute that one. And that one, neither this one. Or that one cannot substitute this one either. Uh, but maybe if you're, you're using a simpler book, then uh, kind of, kind of, I would still recommend that you uh, use that book or use a book on real analysis to, at the bare minimum, just cover the topics that weren't covered in this book. Uh, but yeah, this, this chapter here or this section here uh, really just goes over the notions from uh, some of the notions from real analysis, in particular, uh, limits and continuity. So this is a very, very straightforward chapter here. Uh, I know this is something that people usually struggle with, you know, when they take their first course on analysis and, uh, or on calculus. And then uh, perhaps again, when they take real analysis, this is something uh, that it's a little bit more abstract. People struggle with it. Very easy to follow here, extremely intuitive. The author does an amazing job. And then this leads you into uh, the Lebesgue integral and L1 spaces, or L1 space rather. So again, here, something that you will not see anywhere else, a actual concrete example, right? What is this? This is, uh, this is blasphemy, right? No, no, it's not. Um, this is this is one of those moments for me where I'm just like, man, it's awesome to live in the modern times, right? Because we get to see and uh, read awesome books like this instead of just uh, bashing our heads against our desks or against our books because they are um, written in a way that is uh, maybe not so user friendly. Okay, so I'm just gonna breeze over very briefly the rest of the book here as a really I think most of the people that would be interested or disinterested from reading this book um, would have already decided if they wanted to read this book by now. So this is going to be just for anybody else that is interested in uh, maybe just seeing what the rest of the book has to offer here. So 2.1 starts off with supremum infimum and then in, uh, just goes over the notions of the uh, Riemann integral and then goes into uh, the Lebesgue integral even gives you a couple of uh, convergence theorems. Let's move on here. So what I like about this book as well are these applications. There are several throughout the book. I think there's about three or four um, applications to math or even uh, science. So here we've got application of FOIA series. So this is something that if you've just taken calculus to again, that you're not going to probably see for a semester or two. This is something that I usually see in a course on partial differential equations, maybe ordinary differential equations, uh, but he goes over it here and uh, it's, it's awesome. Again, stuff that you're probably not gonna see for a while and you can get it early here from this book. Chapter three, function spaces. So you might be 
yelling at me, telling me that I'm a liar because function spaces, that's functional analysis, right? You need linear algebra for that. You do. And he introduces you to linear algebra, which is awesome. All right. LP spaces here. Here we go. Hilbert spaces, properties of L2 and uh, L2 spaces. So yeah, uh, the the notions from, uh, we go completion, uh, the notions from linear algebra are introduced where needed, essentially. Here we go, orthonormal basis for Hilbert space. Here we got uh, basis, finite dimensional vector spaces. So yeah, he does a very, very good job here of giving you uh, the notions from whatever field it might be to understand the content, right? 3.4, quantum mechanics. So this is not the first book I've seen do this, but again, this is just really, really awesome. And this is the one that, this section that for me um, really solidifies that this book would be a very, very, very good book for, again, a physicist, maybe going to grad school, maybe needs some of these notions from uh, quantum mechanics, or maybe even uh, the engineer, right, that might need uh, some notions uh, from uh, uh, measure theory, functional analysis, and Lebesgue integration. So yeah, this is a very, very awesome book here. Uh, I thought it was uh, very interesting that he decided to include this section on quantum mechanics. I'm not complaining at all. I think this is cool. Chapter four here, measure theory. So here he just goes over uh, different measures and then the Lebesgue integral with respect to other measures. And then he even has a application here to probability if you're interested, which is awesome to see. Uh, I love anytime I see probability, uh, but like measure theoretic probability, not like the uh, stuff you see of like marbles and stuff like that. I don't know, that doesn't really interest me too much, but uh, here we go. Chapter five, Hilbert space operators. So as you can see here, the author goes over a lot of stuff, really, from uh, measure theory and functional analysis. This is really cool. Uh, operators on finite dimensional spaces. So again, this chapter here is a uh, one that the physicist would enjoy for wherever you might need quantum uh, or uh, a functional analysis or, or the notion of the uh, operator, right? Uh, so something I see again mostly in quantum mechanics. So, yeah, this is a super awesome book. I absolutely love this book. Um, I've had it for a really long time. I just uh, never got around to, to showing it to you all. Uh, but, yeah, this is a super, super awesome book, Solutions to Selected Problems. And um, I'll show you this index if you're interested in uh, just the uh, specifically what content is actually included here. And I hope you can read that. Yeah, so I usually don't do this, but you know, this is maybe uh, something that I couldn't I couldn't find this one online. So you know, maybe if uh, somebody's interested in purchasing this book, like I said, it was like fifty dollars. So um, you know, maybe maybe this index here will help you make a decision one way or the other. I absolutely love this book. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I'll probably start like a playlist or something uh, titled like Hall of Fame, and I'll I'll add this book in there because this one definitely deserves to be in there as well as um, this one here. Uh, so if you saw my last video, I did mention uh, this video. I was fortunate enough uh, to, to acquire the second edition, and I, it's way, way, way better than the first edition. Um, so this book would definitely go into the Hall of Fame playlist as well. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for this one. I hope you all find this video enjoyable or useful. I hope you all enjoyed this book. Um, and if you do decide to, to pick this book up and purchase it, I hope you enjoy it as much as uh, I have. Uh, every time I, I pick this book up, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a privilege, I guess. It um, you know, makes me very grateful for living in the time that I do uh, where I can uh, maybe not struggle so much with authors' writing styles. Um, this is something that that is very, uh, these are books, books like this in general are, are what this channel is all about and what I want to share with you all. Uh, for anybody else that might find themselves in a very difficult situation uh, in, in university or uh, maybe in life, and then maybe this book will, will help you uh, remove some of that, that uh, 
that load from a university uh, and make your life maybe just slightly easier. Uh, so yeah, this, this book is awesome. Can't say it enough. I can't say it enough. It's probably getting a little bit annoying, but I can't say it enough. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for this one, guys. Again, if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Uh, it'll help me out a lot. Also, it'll help you out, too, because it'll grow the community and we'll find like-minded people. And uh, maybe maybe people will show us cool books like this that I haven't seen before. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for this one. See ya.